What's up guys? Kevin here. I'm here to talk about the Matthew M. Williams X Nike collab, especially, I guess specifically, I should say, talking about the Nike Free TR3 Flyknit. So before I talk about the collaboration itself, let me just talk about Matthew Williams and Alix in general, just for a little bit. So Matthew Williams is a largely influential person in the current, I guess, streetwear as well as designer scene. He is currently the creative director of Alix, which I think currently it's named 1019 Alix 92 or 9 SM or something like that. Um, he rebranded it, I think, when he launched like the official label. Um, but then previously when it was like a smaller brand, it was just Alix. So for this video's purpose, I will just be calling it Alix. So Matthew Williams originally started doing stage prop and design. He worked on Lady Gaga's tours as well as Kanye's like costume design. And I think he also worked under Alexander McQueen or worked for Alexander McQueen for a brief short period. Him, Heron Preston and Virgil Abloh uh, created Ben Trill, which is now known as like kind of like a meme thing. Uh, people have been saying that it's performance art such as like Kervin Frost and Ian Connor said it was like a weird performance art thing under streetwear. And he currently works with Kim Jones and Kim Jones recently got appointed creative director of Dior's menswear and I believe a part of women's wear accessories and stuff. But Matthew Williams has been helping a lot with the Dior accessories. It's pretty evident in all of the current accessories that are out for both this season and the previous one. He was very much more of like, I, will, I wouldn't say reclusive, but he liked to work in the shadows a lot up until he started releasing stuff with Alix. So now he's a bit more of a public figure. And yeah, let's talk about the shoes. So MMW is the actual entity that is collaborating with Nike and that's obviously his initials. So this is more of like a personal side product rather, or side project, I should say, rather than an Alix X Nike type of thing. And I think he also worked on Macintosh, but I'll probably put something up here explaining why or explaining something. So specifically, let's talk about the shoes and just a brief detail about the shoes just to get all the logistical stuff out of the way. Retail price in the US was 325 US dollars and in California, you add tax, so it becomes about 350. Um, that is a bit of a hefty price tag, but I think partially it's worth it, and I'll talk about that stuff later in the video. And this also released with a Nike little sports bag. Let me grab it out. Well, actually, let me get the box in general. Sorry about this being a little bit disorganized, but here's the box. It's fairly big, and I went for a US woman's nine and a half which correlates to a US men's eight. So this fits true to size for me. It comes with this nice nylon ripstop bag. It can easily be like a gym bag. It's quite nice actually, I really like it. It comes with a YKK Aqua Zip, which is waterproof, as well as it locks in if you put it in a certain orientation. Uh, so that's really nice. It's branded with like Nike as well as MMW. Um, it's dual layered as well as it having like a nice like bungee system. So I think this itself is pretty much worth like 20, 30 bucks. And if you really compare the price of like, let's say a Yeezy 700 to this, I think you are definitely getting more of a value with this. And I'll continue to reiterate that later. And it also comes with an MMW like paper, but you guys don't really care about the paper. That isn't really something that's like that important to me. Ooh, this could, is this ASMR for you guys? So I actually have both colorways. I'm wearing the black one right now with my acronym P10s and I have the cream ones right over here. So I decided to take off the Vibram sole, at least for the first part, because I wanted to show you guys the actual silhouette of the shoe. So the silhouette of the shoe is on the outside. It has a MMW as well as a little Nike uh, sign on top. So the black one has essentially a white swoosh. The cream one or the ivory one has a black one. 
and the entire upper is pretty much comprised of a fly knit material outside of this elastic cuff and there's a hit of suede in the back there is a giant painted on Nike swoosh that is both painted on the sole as well as painted underneath this TP or this plastic uh, structure material. And there's a tiny Nike swoosh in the front as well as this hard um, toe cap, which I think is actually really nice because a lot of the time with like sock runners is that you end up like pushing out the toe so it like deforms this upper area but i think because of this toe cap it brings a lot of longevity to it and the bottom is just like a normal nike free bottom um there's like blue speckles on like the places with harder plastic and the rest of it's just going to be an ivory as for the black i actually haven't looked at um the black is just an all black all black as well as just being a white swoosh white swoosh and there is this little nice matthew m williams detail on both of the soles both of the soles um as well as black suede on the back instead of the ivory on the inside it has this really nice leather insole pull it up nice leather insole it's going to be red for the black and then for the ivory it's going to be a black insole so these ones it's just like a normal traditional insole um, the MMW stamped in which is nice so I hopefully it doesn't rub away because my issue with a lot of Nike insoles is that they rub away super quickly so that's my primary issue with these guys so I bet right now you're wondering where the heck is the Vibram outsole and I already put them on different shoes so follow me on Instagram at kevin.img. I already posted like a picture as well as a little story about both my John Club C's with the ivory and cream and soul. And now here are the unions with them. This makes them look so like so fucking sick, like some utility shit. Um, the shoes themselves are very, very light. Um, the Vibram outsole is the only thing that's like super, super heavy, but it makes sense. It's, it's a Vibram outsole, which, uh, can I mention how much of a logistical pain in the ass that must have been to get both Vibram as well as Nike to work together? Like Vibram creates really good outsoles. Uh, Nike also creates outsoles, so it must have been like, they like butted heads, but I guess this is best of both worlds where you get the Vibram quality product as well as a Nike quality product with like the free bottom. So I guess that must have been a bit of a logistical fucking nightmare. So aside from the shoes, they also released a bunch of clothing, outerwear, as well as accessories. I believe most of it is still in stock in Nike and a few different retailers. I like them. I had the camo pants and the camo pants came with um, some uh, some tights underneath. The tights were really nice. The pants were okay. I don't think it was worth the retail price. That's why I'm waiting until like either it hits outlets randomly or it is going to go on sale. But I did like the pants. Um, the tops are a little bit expensive. I really liked the pants that they released on the first collection. That happened about a year ago. But those ones, they had like a 3D pocket type of situation. If there are any chicks out there or if you are okay with wearing like... Um, shorts that don't have like a middle seam like the skirt is actually really nice and it follows along that same sort of um same sort of profile with like the pockets and stuff like that so i really do enjoy that type of style not so much the camo stuff but definitely check them out so yeah enough of me talking i'm gonna be doing some on feet as well as like maybe some fits that i think would look really sick with these shoes thank you so much for watching this video i am gonna be doing um, another video really soon. I just wanted to get this video out ASAP because these guys just launched yesterday and I got them delivered today. Um, and I know that um, that a bunch of people are asking me questions about like sizing. Go true to size. I like them. Uh, Flyknit usually fits a little bit snug initially, but eventually stretches out. And the stretching and the morphing of the Flyknit won't be too much of an issue because of the outer cages for these guys. And I really, really do think this is worth 325. If you can get it for 325 flat, good. If you can get it for 325 plus tax, eh, 
but I really wouldn't pay too much over it unless you really find yourself using either the Vibram insole a lot or you're gonna use these guys for training, running, or just using these guys as like an everyday type of shoe because it is quite a different silhouette, but I think this could really match a lot of people's wardrobes, especially the ivory. I do like the black, but I think a black is for a very specific person Either they're really into tech wear or they really, really like the all black and white type of monochrome um, kind of thing. But I think the ivory fits well with a whole different type of demographic outside of like somebody who's into like athletic leisure or into that type of like slim sleek style. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, interview with one of my friends coming tomorrow. Subscribe like let me know what you guys think of this whole collection as well as like the shoe and the whole trend that's going on with uh people putting the vibram outsole onto the other shoes as well as like other different styles of wearing them i think it's great but let me know do you guys think it's janky do you guys think it's weird let me know and i will talk to you guys next time peace